Uh, how and when do you discuss presbyopia with your patients? When I have the patient that I know is approaching presbyopic age, I like to, as I call it, set the table for future encounters. So even if the patient's not necessarily having a complaint at that moment, you know they're in their late 30s, early 40s. They haven't really accepted the fact that they're going to need reading help at some point soon. I like to let them know, hey, in the next couple of years, you may start to notice some problems with reading. Don't worry about that. There are lenses that exist for it. But I always feel that being proactive with multifocal and being proactive with the modalities that I can fit the patient with next year gives more value to the patient. I agree. Typically, we'll target that around 40 to 45, but realistically, our amplitude of accommodation starts decreasing very young. And patients who are on a computer for a significant amount of time or are reading a significant amount, they certainly are using that amplitude of accommodation much more aggressively than we were 20 years ago. I certainly think that in, in the mid-30s, we start, should, should start having that conversation with patients. And if a patient works on their computer for eight hours or 12 hours a day, certainly having the discussion with those patients that we can relieve some of the stress they're putting on their eyes by moving them into a multifocal modality. And the second part of that is the earlier we move those patients into it, the easier it is. Sure. And also, it makes, uh, it, it makes those patients' visual outcome much more attainable and achievable. Um, so assuming that the, the patient has healthy ocular findings and really the only issue is presbyopia, this is how my typical dialogue would, would work. I have great news for you. Your eyes are very, very healthy. Now I am seeing that your eyes are doing just less well of a job or they're just focusing not quite as good up close. It's actually a condition called presbyopia. Um, we have patient education software that I immediately go to and just show them a cross section of the eye and show them exactly how it functions or how it works and the reason why they're not seeing quite as well. When I discuss the physiology of what's going on with the patient, I'm a little bit more descriptive. I have an exaggerated analogy, but it gives them a good visual. And what I do is I tell them, if you don't have a prescription, let's pretend for a minute you don't, when you look in the distance, that muscle is flat like a pancake. When you come to your computer, it has to ball up in order to see here, and it's, it's balled up like a tennis ball, and then to come in here, it's got to get really tight like a golf ball. And I tell them that lens just cannot um, change in that way anymore. It can't focus up close because it's less flexible, and, and they understand that. How do you handle the age aspect of this, or do you? Now that as I've gotten older, being able to have the age conversation <laughs> with a patient becomes much easier because they look at me and go, well, I don't have it as bad as you. Um, exactly. you know, but, but the truth of the matter is that we tend to make little nuanced, you know, jokes about age without actually saying the word age. But you let them know, hey, this is just a normal change. It happens to everybody. And in a young presbyope, I don't use the word multifocal until after they have the lens on. I just say, you know, we've got lenses that let you see up close and far away, and we don't, we don't use words like... No, we don't use the word bifocal. Bifocal, right. multifocal, <laughs> until after they see the benefit.